If you believe the doom and gloom crowd, then originality is dead in Hollywood. With unique and creative films being released at an all-time low in favor of sequels, remakes, reboots, reimaginings, etc., etc., into infinity. It is a breeding ground for a hive mind made up of the same ideas in different packaging. And whilst that's definitely far too broad to be really true, as we do still get the odd shiny film gem to cling to, the reality is that some repeated movie tropes have become so tired and groan-worthy over the years that they can't be used without inciting laughter anymore. These 10 cliches, each of them effective at one point in time, have since become a hallmark for moldy, stinky storytelling, where the goal is less about telling a compelling and singular story and entirely to do with hitting the baseline parameters for pumping out a movie. I am the horror trope, Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 movie cliches everybody hates. 10. The Unearned Sequel Bait Ending AKA, everything's a cinematic universe. Teasing a potential sequel at the end of a movie isn't exactly a new trick in Hollywood, but it has taken on a more cringeworthy form in recent years with the uptick in studios creating their own cinematic universes. Because why focus on making one good movie when you can get fat on the promise of a steady stream of spin-offs in the same vein? The most obvious recent example is probably Venom, which dredged up Woody Harrelson in a bad ginger wig to tease a con filled sequel. And that is not to forget the comically bad sequel bait ending of last year's Robin Hood or 2017's The Mummy aggressively teasing the doomed dark universe in its final moments. The difference between these dubious prospective franchises and, say, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that the MCU started small-ish and didn't put the cart before the horse. It built up a fan base with successful, disconnected movies before committing to the bigger picture. But these days, just about every studio wants to copy Marvel's formula, and there are precious few examples where it has actually been successful. 9. The Amnesiac Hero There's no lazier way to place a protagonist on the same level of ignorance as the audience than to straight up make them an amnesiac. It's a trope that has been tired for years, and yet in recent times, movies like Bumblebee and Captain Marvel have kept trotting it out like it's still interesting and creative. It's not! The Amnesiac Hero hasn't really felt fresh since the early days of the Bourne franchise, and it's an easy way to make viewers suspicious that they're going to be blindsided with a The Hero is not who you thought they were plot twist which is almost always the case. It's a trope that fundamentally gets a movie off on cynical footing. And though it doesn't always suck, the original Robocop did it masterfully, for instance, it feels way too thoroughly played out and overdone. 8. The villain planned to get caught all along We've all seen movies where the villain gets captured midway through, but surprise! It's then revealed that they intended to get caught, and it was merely another step in their master plan. Cue the baddie escaping so they can set up the third act finale, and Bob is your uncle. Take Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight saga. The Joker allows himself to be arrested in the Dark Knight only to stage an elaborate, explosive escape. And Bane was absolutely a voluntary prisoner at the start of The Dark Knight Rises. It's one of those conceits that often works well in the moment when you're busy being overwhelmed by the spectacle of the villain's capture and escape, but it's decidedly less enjoyable on repeat viewings when the outcome is known and you're more likely to pick the logic clean. Thankfully, the trope became so infamous so fast that it's actually pretty rare these days, but don't be surprised if it comes back round again sometime in the near future. 7. The Ugly Girl Who Totally Isn't The Ugly Duckling is a laughably old hat cliché that still persists in Hollywood for some unknown reason. Typically, it involves a conventionally attractive actor, typically a woman, being cast in the role of a bland, unattractive, or even ugly character, owing to Hollywood's impossibly high, distorted standard of beauty compared to the realities of day-to-day -day life. This is a most common trope in the rom-com genre, where the nerdy or plain girl gets a quick makeover and turns into a stunner. She's All That is probably the most memorable instance from the last 20 years, as was so brilliantly sent up in the criminally underrated spoof Not Another Teen Movie. The widespread mockery of the trope has at least made it less apparent in cinema today, though Hollywood's general barometer for attractiveness is still way off the mark, especially when it comes to standards for young women. 6. Everybody is related to everybody else Family may or may not be the most important thing there is, but Hollywood is absolutely obsessed with creating eye-rollingly incestuous character dynamics in most of its flagship franchises. Sure, it felt fresh in The Empire Strikes Back to have Darth Vader be revealed as Luke Skywalker's daddy. 
but movies have recycled this plot twist so aggressively over the years that making the antagonist the hero's parent or sibling or cousin twice removed is more embarrassing than shocking these days. Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald revealed in its cliffhanger ending that Credence Barebone was actually Dumbledore's secret brother. While Mortal Engines made the comically awful, ludicrously predictable reveal that Hugo Weaving's baddie was the protagonist's dad all along. And if it's not villainy, then Hollywood is trying to conjure up convoluted familial relationships between heroic characters. Encouraged by fans who desperately desire everything to be linked together, logic be damned. 5. The gun goes off, but who gets shot? The gunshot fake-out is a cliché almost as old as cinema itself, whereby the hero will typically get caught in a tussle with an enemy, after which a gunshot will ring out, with close camera work making it unclear exactly who has been shot. After a beat, one of the parties, usually the attacker, will drop down dead, in a trope so hilariously moldy it's amazing modern movies are still using it at all. But alas, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation boasts a comical scene where Ilsa appears to get shot by villain Solomon Lane, yet of course, he actually fired at one of his anonymous goons. More recently in Widows, Viola Davis' protagonist ends up fighting over a gun with the movie's antagonist, only for a gunshot to blare out, and after a beat, it's revealed that the aggressor was the one to catch a bullet. That Steve McQueen of all filmmakers indulged such a rampant cliché with a straight face is utterly baffling. It sure would be nice to see a filmmaker actually subvert this cliché and have the hero just drop down dead, without any bulletproof vest they decided to stick on at the last minute to save the day. Go on, kill them. I dare you. Do it! 4. The Dead Wife Slash Girlfriend as Hero Motivation Killing off the female love interest is such a widespread cliché in cinema that it has even got its own specific name, fridging. It's a trope that lazily attempts to heighten the drama of the predominantly male hero's journey, while generally reducing the agency of the focal female character, on account of her being dead and all. Christopher Nolan's had a hard-on for this trope through large swaths of its filmography, to the point that many have already joked about who he might be seeking to cast as the dead wife in his next movie. And most recently, Deadpool 2 saw Wade Wilson's fiancée, Vanessa, killed in the opening moments of the movie, despite many fans expecting her to have an expanded role in the sequel. At least we recently got to see a reverse fridging with Steve Trevor's demise in Wonder Woman. But honestly, wouldn't it just be nice to not have the love interest, whatever gender they may be, dismissively killed in order to cheaply heighten the drama? It's Hollywood screenwriting at its most stock and unimaginative. 3. The Genetic Hybrid Villain One of the big problems facing just about every long-tenured movie franchise is the difficulty in constantly one-upping one's own sense of spectacle. As a result, one of the most bizarre trends to emerge in recent years is the notion of the genetic hybrid, which takes an iconic movie antagonist and combines them with something else to make a bigger, better baddie. That so rarely actually is. For instance, Jurassic World introduced the hybrid known as the Indominus Rex, and the sequel, Fallen Kingdom, crossed this with the raptor to create the thoroughly underwhelming ultra-hybrid Indoraptor. Elsewhere, Terminator Genesis toyed with the prospect of human-machine hybrids courtesy of nanotechnology. And most recently, the Predator introduced a genetically modified Ultimate Predator, which harvested DNA from superior life forms to constantly upgrade itself. It is ultimately a wider indication of Hollywood's desire to return to long-drained wells with as minimal effort as possible. And pretty much any time a new movie trailer mentions an upgrade or hybridized iteration of a classic movie monster, it is best to significantly lower your expectations. 2. The Beam in the Sky Finale If blockbuster screenwriters can't think of a suitably bombastic finale to their movie, they seem to generally fall back on a trusty third act, Beam in the Sky, whereby the antagonist launches an ambiguously apocalyptic, CGI-soaked plan which the heroes must quickly foil. Some examples include the various energy beams featured in the likes of Transformers Dark of the Moon, The Avengers, The Amazing Spider-Man, Man of Steel, Fantastic Four, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, and Suicide Squad. Hollywood does appear to have eased off on the trope in the last year or two, but it's just a matter of time before another blockbuster hurls a digital beam into the heavens again and hopes we'll actually give a damn once more. 1. The Third Act Exposition Dump Being overly reliant on exposition is one of the worst crimes any movie script can commit. Because nothing screams lazy filmmaking more than a movie keen to vomit an explanation for everything into the audience's lap. I mean, it is gross and messy to begin with. The first and especially third acts of movies are often guilty of this, with the exposition monologue perhaps being confirmed and immortalized by Alfred Hitchcock's horror classic Psycho. Despite the undeniable brilliance of the film, a finale that literally spells out Norman Bates' state of mind feels laughably on the nose, 
especially to contemporary audiences well acquainted with the nature of psychology. It's good to keep the audience abreast of what's going on, but A, don't overdo it, and B, if you can, do it visually. Show, don't tell. That's what movies are all about. And that's our list. What other movie cliches do you hate? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back soon for some more lovely film content. Thanks for watching.